Republican Congressman Tim Burchett of Tennessee. It's good to see you, Representative. Thanks for being here. I want to ask you, you voted against the reauthorization of this bill. Those in favor say that this will help us target cartels south of the border and the flow of fentanyl into the U.S. Why are you against the FISA Act? 278,000 violations. Jorge said 300, and it had a K next to it. I think he, he might have misspoke, but it is almost 300,000 violations of that where they spied on, on Americans, and that's not what it's about. They are allowed to spy on Americans without a search warrant, ma'am. That's a clear violation of the Fourth Amendment. I think that's a very chilling effect. And honestly, if the uh, if they were concerned about uh, drug traffickers and um, and terrorists in our country that they could spy on, then why did why didn't Director Ray mention once the border during the hearing last week? That's where it's coming over. It's coming over the border, ma'am. This is. Just an opportunity for uh, the so-called intelligence community to spy on Americans. We don't need it. It needs to be cleaned up. This is a clear violation of our constitutional rights. And you know, every time they they need the FBI, for instance, we we just punish them for their 278,000 violations by buying them a new headquarters bigger than the Pentagon. We've got to get our act together, man. We're going to lose our country. I, I want to be clear here. Are you in favor of the CIA spying on foreigners across the border without a warrant if it prevents fentanyl from coming here? It's just a, a spying on Americans that you object to? Can you can you differentiate for me? Yeah, that's, exactly, that's exactly right. But 278,000 times they did that. How many is that in a in a day's time, man? That is that's really incredible, the amount of spying they did on American citizens illegally. Some of it was... Apparently, they were spying on uh, people that were sleeping with their wives, things like that. And this is the abuse that's going on within our, uh, within some of the higher echelons of our of our law enforcement community. Clearly, if they were concerned about fentanyl coming over the border and terrorists coming up, coming into our country, they would close our southern border. No mention of that. No no urgency there. Yet, in fact, we know. For instance, over 140,000 Chinese are here. We don't know what they're doing. We don't know where they are. Just last week, <clears throat> we had a terrorist, a known terrorist that was caught on our terrorist watch list that was allowed admission into our country illegally, but still allowed, yet they were allowed to operate within our country over a year. Now, what the heck were they doing? How many of these folks are in our country? Those are the kind of things that the FBI and the CIA need to be looking at instead of sh shilling for this very weak president we have in a horrible, horrible border policy. And let me ask, Representative, what would need to change in this legislation for you to be on board with it? Just allow for a, um, uh, a warrant provision. If you want to spy on Americans, <clears throat> you should have to get, an, get a warrant. Why are they so afraid of the Constitution? What do you expect will happen at tomorrow's reconsideration vote? I suspect um, more of the same. Um, you know, that. They're going to scare people, and I would hope the the base of the people that truly believe in our Constitution, both on the left and the right, would rally around the folks that that made the correct vote. I felt, and then and bring over a few more because the the amendment, you know, it tied. So every person was the tiebreaker. Every person that voted against the Fourth Amendment was the tiebreaker. So I would hope that we could get that back to the floor and work on it, but I doubt we will. There'll be too much diversion on the issue, and I, and I dare say that the Constitution, again, will, will suffer from it. With the short time we have, I do want to get your take on the major news of this weekend. Is there anything that you want to say about Iran's attack on Israel yesterday? Yes, ma'am. Um, I think it's, 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 it's wrong on our part. Since we are basically funding both sides of this war, we're sending money to Israel, and of course, uh, we took the um, the limitations off Iran's oil production. They're, they're putting out about 2.4 million barrels a day. Everybody's talking about the six or seven billion of their money that we freed up, and that should be of concern. But the, the oil, is, it's just a dr drop in the bucket, no pun intended, but it is a drop in the bucket for the amount of oil that we've allowed them to produce. And also the fact that China is, is one of the large largest, I think about 80% of the oil is, is one of their largest uh, purchasers of that oil. So there's a lot of moving parts in this thing. And I Representative, I think those, those are strong words. So you believe that uh, the, the movement and those sanctions is tantamount to us funding Iran? 
Yes, ma'am. That's where they're, they were broke three years ago under Donald Trump. Iran was broke. They were bankrupt. Now, I mean, their people aren't doing very well. Their leaders are, and they're buying. That's how they can afford to send 300 drones and plus missiles uh, towards Israel. Yet again, I, you know, here we are in the same boat funding both sides of this war. I think we ought to support Israel. They're our ally. Iran, uh, they don't, they're chanting death to America, death to Israel. I think we ought to take them serious and we ought to let um, Israel take care of their business. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.